Welcome to the Expositor Podcast with Dr. Stephen J. Lawson. Dr. Lawson is the founder and president of One Passion Ministries. The Expositor Podcast is focused on taking your preaching to the next level. Now, here's Dr. Lawson. In this session, I want to talk to you about how to put together an expository sermon. Um, I often have pastors, especially young pastors, ask me, how do I put together an expository sermon? And it's very important. Um, I teach a class at the Master's Seminary entitled The Mechanics of Expository Preaching. And a mechanic knows how all the different individual parts uh, of an engine run and, and, and contribute to the engine running. And he can strip it apart, put it back together. You need to know the parts of a sermon as well and how that is put together. So I want to begin with three words that, begin, that end in I-O-N. And these are not original with me, but they're very well known. Observation, interpretation, application. Um, as you begin to prepare any sermon, it always begins with observation. Observing what's in the passage. What, what is this passage about? Uh, both in the macro as it relates to the larger context of this book and even the larger context of Scripture itself, and then in the micro, what are the smaller individual parts of this passage? In another podcast, I will give you more details about the observations, but at this point, you just need to know it begins with observation. That addresses what does the passage say? The next is interpretation, which, what, which means what does the passage mean? Um, to interpret the passage means you need to know the laws of what we call hermeneutics, which is the science of interpretation. You need to know how to interpret the literature of the Bible. And in another podcast, I will give you uh, some of the specifics of the laws of interpretation but once you see what the passage says, you then need to know what does the passage mean. The next ION word would be application. And this addresses what does the passage require. Um, once you've interpreted the passage, you need to find the timeless principles that are in this passage and to draw the implications for Christian life, as well as even evangelistically for unbelievers, as well as make application uh, to show how this is to be lived out. Every passage is profitable. Every passage is profitable for Christian living and even for um, preaching the gospel. So, observation, interpretation, application. Now, I want to give you a, a few more I-O-N words that will help you think about the different component parts of an expository sermon. The next would be unification. And by that, I mean there is one dominant truth that is taught in this passage of Scripture. And there should be one dominant truth in every sermon. We call it uh, the dominant theme, uh, the big idea, the major thrust of this passage. And here's what you need to know. Every expository sermon should be a one-point sermon. There may be three or four what we call homiletical headings to this message, but uh, every message should have the tip of the spear that is the driving uh, central thrust of this message. You need to isolate that. And that needs to run through the entire sermon. And it will prevent you from chasing rabbits and, and going off on um, uh, really a, a wild chase. It keeps you on message. The next ION word is formation. There needs to be structure to the message. There needs to be headings. Um, some preachers will actually state the headings. Others will not state the headings, but they have those headings in their mind. For example, 
Um, I like to use headings, and sometimes I alliterate them uh, just to make them obvious. But there needs to be structure. Um, uh, it's like the bones of my body. It's, it's like the steel girders of a, of a, uh, uh, off, a high-rise building. Um, it's like the chapters um, in a book. It's like the, sl the pieces of a, of a pie or a cake. You need to be able to divide it out. Though it has one dominant theme and thrust, there will be then different headings. And I divide out my headings by what's in the passage, what's in the text. And I, I will draw a diagonal line in the middle of the verse or at the end of the verse to break out uh, my headings to make that uh, visibly uh, obvious. The next ION word is illustrations. Uh, you may or may not add illustrations. Um, you don't want to just tell people what this passage says. You want to show them what it says with illustrations. They could be drawn from Scripture. They could be drawn from current events, from your own personal life, uh, from wherever. Then the last two ION words would be introduction and conclusion. Um, I do these last. Uh, in fact, any time I've ever written an introduction on the front end of this preparation, uh, they always are thrown away. I need to know what the house is before I can add the front porch and the back porch. And so the introduction is to draw the listener into what this message will be about. You show the importance of, of why this message must be preached and why it must be heard from this passage. And then uh, a conclusion, and you want to end strong. Um, and this will be the last thing that I write. Um, you want to end with impact. You want to end with even emotion. So these ION words, I think, will help you think through the component parts of an expository sermon. Uh, you would begin with observation, interpretation, application. What does the passage say? What does the passage mean? What does the passage require? Unification, the dominant theme running through this. Formation, the subdivisions of the message. Um, then illustrations, how can you show what this is saying or even show the application at an introduction, at a conclusion at the end, and you have the essential parts of an expository sermon. Uh, I think keeping this very basic like this is helpful. Uh, there are other words I could have added, but these are the bare minimum of putting together an expository sermon. So you can do this. Um, you can put together an expository sermon, and the more you do it, the better you will become at it. God bless you.